I'm going to call this select the uh, November 5th, 2018 Select Board meeting to order and invite you to rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> I'd like to uh, welcome everyone to tonight's select board meeting. Uh, nice to have you all here. Uh, just as a reminder, if you have one of these, which most people do, if you could turn it to silent or off or something that it doesn't ring, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Okay, the next uh, item is uh, agenda additions and changes, and we have a few things at our table. A few things that can all be, can all be added to um, item 5D, which is the workshop on firearms ordinance. There's uh, some thoughts from Max, thoughts for November 5th select board discussion on shooting ranges. There's also two documents uh, sent over by Fish and Wildlife earlier today, um, both tied to the West Mountain, West Mountain shooting range and its uh, purpose of the range and some rules and guidelines just as an example of what a public range might look like. Okay. Thank you, Greg. Uh, that's it? Yes. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to add these items to uh, Agenda 5D? So moved. Thank you, Irene. Do I have a second? second? Thank you, Mike. Any further discussion about adding these to the agenda? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes 4-0. Uh, I will try to lean in on this. Um, one select board member, uh, Andy Watts, uh, is not at the table right now. He's on his way. He's going to be a little bit late, but he will be joining us soon, uh, depending on traffic. Okay, so we're on to the point of the agenda, which is public to be heard, and that's a time for the public to speak to the select board on items that are not on the agenda. Is there anyone here tonight wishing to speak uh, during public to be heard? Okay, uh, well then. That being the case, we're gonna go to our first item of business, and we have uh, an interview tonight for a position on the Energy Committee by Michael Gifford. Is Michael here? Wonderful. Um, why don't you uh, join us at, at that table with the microphone. First, uh, we'd like to welcome you, uh, and thank you so much for being willing to step forward and volunteer to be uh, on the Energy Committee. What uh, we'd like to do is um, just hear about your background okay. and uh, what your um, reason is for wanting to be appointed to the Energy Committee. Okay. Um. My background is I am a civil engineer who is uh, shifted to energy services. I work actually for Vermont Gas in the Energy Services Department. Um, and I am about to reach my hours where I can sit for the professional engineering licensure and I'm working towards my certified energy management wow. licensure. So uh, that's kind of my educational background, but my other background is I've, uh, I'm an Essex resident obviously and I have a little boy. I'm a new dad, and so I don't know if some part of that for me makes me want to do more civic duty and get more involved in the community. And, um, I feel it's important. Um, in terms of what, why I want to join the committee is I, I'd like to be, uh, we obviously are facing climate situations that affect us all, and I want to help uh, the town and the village reach um, energy efficiency goals while trying not to put too much undue burden on the residences or the taxpayers. Okay. That's excellent. Thank you. Appreciate that, Michael. Okay, I'm going to open it up to uh, questions from the, the board for, for Michael. Anybody? Elaine? Hi, Michael. Hi. I would just like to know what your goals or priorities might be for the committee if you join. My goals and priorities are to support the committee, you know, using some of my engineering knowledge um, to help with certain aspects of, of maybe measures and procedures and reading through some of the documentation to help maybe uh, provide insight in, in, into what the engineering behind some projects might be. But the other part of it is my major goal is to reduce energy consumption, you know, uh, citywide, whether it's even municipal buildings commercial enterprises and residential trying to find a way to reduce energy consumption not you know no 
no magic bullet per se, but you know, save save the taxpayers money, save the people money, and also um, decarbonize, mm. uh, find renewables that can be a benefit for people, solar, wind. So most likely sharing some technical ex expertise that may not be present on the committee at the moment. Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it, um, and I'm open-minded, you know, I may work for the gas company, but it's not, I'm not here to sell gas, I'm here to <laughs> solve energy solutions, find energy solutions. Okay, other questions, Michael. It's my understanding that you've been to a few of the meetings um, I've, I've participated in one right. so far. Okay. In that very brief experience, do you find the committee moving in the direction that you thought that they would be? Well, there's a lot of excitement uh, right now um, for uh, one of the initiatives taking place, the Button Up Initiative, and that was mm -hmm. the meeting I was at. So anytime you're seeing that kind of excitement and, you know, feet on the ground kind of activism towards help, uh, a, a program, sure. that I think that's moving in the right direction. That's, sure. you know, Putting the energy into the energy committee is a good, is a good good way of looking at it. Um, I don't I don't know really where they're moving, but there was a great group of people and diverse group of people, which I think is also important for you know um, brainstorming, talking through ideas, and looking at things. Right. Different the different points of view I think are really important. Great, thank you. Harry, what do you think of the meeting venues? <laughs> I like to eat. <laughs> we met at a restaurant that night. The energy can be good. Was that right? Nice. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was cozy. I'm, I'm <laughs> actually, we're actually, uh, it gives me an opportunity too because I'm, I'm, we're trying to launch restaurant initiatives it's, uh, um, at, the, at the gas company, but we're working with Efficiency Vermont to, to try to couple ways to, for restaurants to reduce their energy usage because <clears throat> they tend to be high users. Okay. Uh, all right, sure. May I just say something about Button Up or would you like to? There's a big event this week at Founder School. Yes. So the button, yeah, I can I can go briefly. Button up event is a coordination with the Essex Energy Committee and Efficiency Vermont, and it's launching on Wednesday. And what it does is it provides the residents of Essex and Westford uh, the opportunity to get a free energy walkthrough um, if they sign up, and the Building Energy and uh, Energy Co-op of Vermont will provide the audit ex expertise to do a walkthrough on people's homes at no charge. Now, it's not a full audit. If they find stuff that could lead to a full audit, that, that could go from there. But they can find little things to help people save, save on heating and be a little bit more comfortable this winter. Excellent. Okay. And what about time? Do you have uh, the time that available for the slots in which they meet? Yes. Um, and my wife is very supportive of this. She's at home right now putting little Logan to bed. So, um, you know, she, so she's available for me to have the time. And also, um, because I work in energy services, it's, my uh, Vermont Gas is, encourages it. And so it's not something, it's, it, it's something that if I'm putting time towards the energy committee, they believe in that kind of civic engagement. Okay, good support. Wonderful. Okay, any, any other questions? Maybe? Nobody? Okay, the process typically is uh, we will go into executive session at the end of the meeting, uh, have a discussion, then come out and make a decision. But if the board wants to do it differently, we can entertain that. Yes, Mike. I would move that we go ahead and have, rather than go into executive session, just do it in an open, open meeting, meeting right now. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Feel like is the application process closed? Were there other applicants? Or? It, it's been open since um, July, and this is the only applicant that has come in. Ah. <laughs> and this will bring it to full complement. Right? There's just one opening, I believe. Mm -hmm. And the Energy uh, Committee is uh, starting to take off. We're doing some, some good works there. Okay, so if it's okay uh, to do it open with the board, then uh, I would entertain a motion. Mike? I move that uh, the board approve Mike Gifford's application to become a member of the Essex Energy Committee um, effective immediately. Thank you, Michael. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Elaine. Any further discussion about appointing Michael Gifford to the Energy Committee? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes unanimously. <laughs> Welcome aboard, and again, we thank, thank you, you so much for being willing to give up your personal time on behalf of the town. Absolutely. Thank, thank you, you for your time. Thank, thank you. you, Mike.
Okay, so that's going to uh, move us through uh, business item 5A and 5B. So we're on to business item 5C, and that's approval of property setback agreement for GMP for Green Mountain Power Essex Solar slash Storage LLC Solar Facility on River Road. Greg, you want to kick that off for us? Sure. Um, and Will Vive is here as well, and uh, representing um, the company, uh, Essex GMP Essex Solar Storage, if you have questions for him. Um, Basically, GMP Essex Solar Storage is uh, putting on a four and a half megawatt solar facility with battery storage at 251 River Road. Um, that is typically permitted through the Public Utility Commission at the state. Uh, in this case, they came across some um, issues on the on the site, or they have some rare, threatened, endangered species um, that they don't want to disturb. And our Agency of Natural Resources uh, doesn't want disturbed. And that was a surprise. That wasn't known during the application. Correct. Process. Yep. Um, because of that, uh, GMP Essex Solar Storage has approached the town and the abutting landowner to look for a waiver from the typical 50-foot setback. Um, the Public Utility Commission is defers, well, they don't defer, they, they'll look for input from the town and the abutters uh, before they make a decision on that. Uh, the abutting landowner has signed an agreement um, saying that he was okay with the reduced setback, so now it's coming before the town. The Planning Commission reviewed it on Thursday of last week. Uh, they didn't take a formal vote, but they took a straw poll of four to one to, to recommend that this be um, waived at the select board level. Uh, the one dissenting vote um, was concerned about potentially setting a precedent for other projects with the Public Utility Commission. Um, but otherwise, it's before you tonight to, to see how you feel. Okay, thanks for that, that intro. Okay, uh, questions from the board about this request to Go from a 50-foot setback that's defined to a waiver for 10 feet. Every? How do staff feel about the precedent setting nature of this? I, is it truly dangerous I, or, or? I, I think it's a valid that? question, a valid concern, and I still think you can take it case by case. Um, in this instance, it's the project is on industrial zoned land. It abuts other industrial zoned land. Um, typically, in those those uh, zoning districts, there's a 25-foot setback from rear and um, side property lines. I, I think uh, you can certainly make it in a motion if you vote to support this, um, which is what the recommendation from staff. Um, you could do so and acknowledge that this is not setting a precedent. I think you could still take it on a different, different approach if it came up, say, next to a residential neighborhood or a mixed-use district. Um, I, I don't believe that you're, you're setting a precedent in that sense. Okay. Mike? Um, I'm I'm not a big fan of waivers in the first place. Um, I'm, I, I worry about the precedent as Dave Raphael is worried about the precedent. Um, there are two things that, that are going to allow me to vote in the affirmative on this. Um, one of them I'd like to see taken to a more permanent status and that's because it is a budding industrial property. I, I do not believe waivers, I, I don't believe in waivers on residential property for that, for industrial and the fact that the owner has signed um, an agreement saying that he's okay with it is gonna allow me to say yes on this one. But I, I would like to investigate the possibility of having that be reduced to writing where it would only be granted against industrial property or the industrial zone. I think that's where it would be, um, I think that where is where it would be best served. Okay, anybody else? Andy. The, uh, the request uh, mentions that there's a substantial impact uh, to the project if this isn't allowed. Do you, do you, can you quantify what substantial is? Uh, yes, I can. <clears throat> My name's uh, William Veve, and I represent GMP uh, Essex Solar Storage. And uh, direct answer to your question, uh, by allowing us to site in that 50-foot uh, area, um, we would be able to approximately increase the uh, deployment of panels by 6% or 420,000 watts uh, DC, which would equate to a three to four percent overall increase in total output and uh, over the life of the project which is estimated to be about 35 years it uh, is a significant number and just to remind 
the board that this uh, project is a GMP project for all GMP ratepayers, <clears throat> and the more solar production that the system is able to produce, produces a higher rate of return for the project, and the higher rate of return lowers the overall cost of operating the system. Uh, and all benefits from this project, including the storage component, do go back to uh, the ratepayers as it's presented in the full petition. So directly about six percent, which equates to uh, three to four percent overall. Okay. Okay. Other questions? You okay with that, Andy? Uh, yeah. Um, I just want a clarification from Greg. I think you said that typical is 25. Is that in the local zoning regulations? An industrial district has a 25 foot side setback and a 25 foot rear setback. It's 50 feet from the front. Um, we're at a bunch of road, but side and rear is 25 feet. Okay, so 25 would not require a waiver? No, th it's just tricky because um, basically all the utilities are permitted by the state. Ah. And so because if they came in, if they had stuck to the 50-foot waiver, the state would be issuing its permit um, as long as it was satisfied with the other requirements. Because they're requesting less than that 50-foot setback, that's why the state defer looks to the town and the abutting landowners to see their sentiments on the matter basically it's a built-in rule to the 248 process so 50 feet is the standard that we generally have to meet unless there's a three-party agreement okay. and the three parties are the select board abutting the property owner and the petitioner Can I make another comment? sure yeah, yeah I guess I guess with regard to, to Mike's comment I'm I'm because it's industrial, I think I'm okay with the 10 foot, but I'd rather review them all at, at individually rather than make it a, a common rule of, of 10 feet. Yeah, I think this would be just the exception, right? The, mm -hmm. It doesn't change the ordinance right. of, of the 50. No, it doesn't. No, if, if there's no another application that came in, it'd be a similar permitted by the Public Utility Commission. If they requested a waiver, that would again come to the select board for, for input. Okay. Uh, Evan? Like staff is saying, you can take any future case on a case-by-case -case basis, you're stating your reasons for potentially permitting this one. That doesn't mean the next one that comes through the door gets it or not. He has his circumstances, you're listening to it. Um, as I understand it, you had a 50-foot setback proposed and then you came up against natural um, yeah. habitat and other things that yes. the state wanted you to avoid when we first came and presented to the planning commission the select board was through the initial uh, design and the RTE studies were not done and then to be responsive to the steep slope aspects um, we also took out a significant portion of vegetative management so this all goes into increasing the output which was not known at the time until all of the um, site walks were done by all the agencies and that just got completed uh, about two and a half weeks ago and greg do you know if any other waivers have been allowed in that zone in recent time for solar stuff I no just any setback uh, waiver um and in, the, in the industrial zone the i'm not aware of any setback waivers um the zoning district to the north is a resource preservation district, industrial. This, this butts up against the industrial piece of that district. Um, within there, there's uh, occasionally requests for waivers to go into the 50-foot front buffer, which, which is supposed to be a forested area. Um, the Planning Commission has granted some waivers in that instance, and, and that's for various reasons. In some cases, that 50-foot buffer is kind of scraggly, and there's not much forest there okay. to maintain anyway, so it, it varies. But um, okay. That's, that's an example. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions on this? Seems kind of straightforward. Okay, Irene? May I add some language to it, such as between industrial parcels or the word one time to make sure that <coughs> we know that it's not broad? So that's not a precedent setting yeah. that all yeah. yeah, I think I think you'd want to stick to the terms not precedent setting. I think you'd want to give the reasons why you are, give, are, are considering it. Which I, I think have already been stated, but if you want to include it in the motion, yes, sure. Uh, what's the board's pleasure? Should we ask for public com comment? Uh, anybody want to make a comment on this item? Okay. No. I guess not. 
Sure. I'm ready to make a That'll be great. Thing. Thank you. And then you can throw darts at it if you want. I would move the select board agree to a one-time reduced property line setback of 10 feet between industrial parcels for a solar array at 251 River Road for environmental and performance reasons. Thank you, Irene. I have a, do I have a second on that? Second. Thank you, Michael. Any further discussion on um, allowing mm -hmm. that, uh, that waiver from 50 feet to 10 feet with the other conditions? Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a agreement. Pardon? We never mind. Okay. Um, any further? Yeah. Any other discussion? Okay. Hearing none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. And good luck. Thank you. Okay. We're on to item 5D, and I'm just guessing, but I bet that's where a lot of you are here for. Um, so as I've done in the, the past workshops on the firearms ordinance. I'd like to just give a, an overview of how we're going to run this one. Um, so I, just a little bit of background. Uh, on October 15th, the select board proposed eliminating the discharge of firearms on the town properties of Indian Brook and Saxon Hill parcels except during November 1st through December 15th. These no discharge areas extend to property boundaries of these parcels without a 500 foot buffer beyond these, their property lines. The current 500 foot no discharge buffer extending out from Indian Brook's high water mark will remain in place year round as it is today. Uh, no discharge of firearms will be allowed on the tree farm parcel all year. Uh, the town will develop a policy for signage at these parks regarding firearms discharge ordinance and the town will also develop a plan to educate the public on any firearms discharge ordinance changes. And again, these changes don't go into effect until there's a, uh, it gets accepted by the, the select board, has to get approved by the select board. We go to a public hearing uh, to hear from the public, and then it has to get approved at, after that. So there's a, there's a long process. Uh, tonight, we're going to have just the workshop going on. Um, yeah, tonight we're going to discuss and deliberate on the firearms discharge ordinance as it relates to sport shooting ranges. The select board at a previous meeting uh, decided to, to break up the discussions into discrete parts, and tonight it's the uh, sport shooting range uh, discussions. Uh, after the select board has had its discussions on uh, the sport shooting ranges, we will open it up to the public for comments. And as I've done before, I'll give you more details on that when we get to that point in the process. But after the public comments, uh, I'll bring it back, bring the discussion back to the select board table to get a sense of the board on what, if any, changes they propose relating uh, to sports shooting ranges that we would then ask staff to uh, draft some language for. So we won't be taking any formal vote. It'll be, you know, a consensus of where we want to go because we, with ordinances, we discuss them, and then at one, at one time we do an approval on the whole thing. So, but we're just breaking it up for discussion, uh, manageable discussion points um, on this one. Um, so is that clear about what we're going to do tonight? We're going to have a select board, we'll have our discussion, but we will certainly invite you um, for your comments after that. Um, so if there's no questions on that, then I'm going to, uh, we're going we're gonna to start. And... As I did on the other discussions, as chair, I thought it would be wise to uh, put a straw man out there for the select board to, uh, as Irene mentioned before, throw darts at. So, uh, and we added that to the agenda at the beginning of the meeting. So what I'd like to do is just go over those points uh, for the board. And again, this is only to begin the discussion. You can take it to whatever direction you want, but I thought I'd put a stake in the ground uh, that I thought we could maybe discuss. So um, the select board acknowledges the legitimate concerns mes many residents uh, have regarding safety and noise generated from residential sports shooting ranges. So therefore, I'd like to, uh, to make this proposal to just start the discussion. Um, we've all been giving this a lot of thought. This is not something that we just started thinking about recently. It's been, you know, we've been on this for, for years. But uh, what I 
regarding sports shooting ranges, what I'd, I'd like us to consider, for discussion anyway, is having uh, all shooting ranges in Essex be required to obtain a permit from the town in order for a property owner to operate an active shooting range on property. Uh, currently, permits are required for open burn on, on uh, private property uh, today, just as an example of a permit that you have to get if you want to uh, do burn your leaves or, or a large amount of brush. Uh, I'd like us to consider making permits renewable every couple of years or at some other regular frequency. Um, I would propose that the permits list all the criteria that the select board decides is pertinent for reasonable safety and uh, noise level. Some examples regarding that criteria. Uh, understanding what date the range was established. Uh, I believe the burden of proof would be on the property owner and it's important for the select board to know when it was established because there's the legislature has some rules depending on uh, when it was established. Um, I'd like to request um, the police chief uh, or his, his department anyway to review perhaps either the NRA's range source book or some other reference to see if it's um, uh, valid to use as a reference manual for backyard shooting range design criteria. Um, for example, you know, we would expect it to be designed to contain all fired shots so that we don't have any errant ones uh, going off in a direction that was not intended. Um, in the permit, I would propose that there's a sketch of the property. Is that me? Yeah, I think so. Okay, we'll try that. A sketch of the property, can you still hear me? Yes. Okay. A sketch of the property with the location orientation of the proposed range, including all buildings, and properties within a certain defined distance. I don't know what distance that would be, but that's something we can talk about. I propose that the defined hours of operation also be included in there. I'd like it to contain clear language that the property owner takes on all liability risks of the range. I'd like to make sure that there's clear language that states that the town takes zero liability risks of your personal range. Um, police. We'll ask the police to do some type of background check, whatever they're able to do, um, on the permit requester, similar to what we do for liquor licenses. Before we approve a liquor license, there's a, just a, a criminal background check. This is not the background check you would do for uh, obtaining um, a firearm. This is um, one that, again, that we would do for, uh, similar to what we do for liquor license, if that's possible. I'd like it also to be very clear on fines and penalties that we think are appropriate uh, for violations uh, of the permit. Um, I don't expect those to ever have to be enacted as long as we have it very clear up there what they would be so that nobody's surprised if there is a violation what, the, uh, what that penalty may be. Um, I would like the permits to be reviewed and approved by this board, the select board, similar to how we currently approve liquor licenses, where we have the, uh, we would have the permit request on a select board agenda, uh, require the requester to be present before the select board so that uh, he can be there to, or she can be there for us to ans ask questions and to receive the, uh, an admonition as similar to what we do for liquor licenses. Uh, I'd like us to also uh, this have it at an open, it'll be an open meeting and therefore the public will be given an opportunity uh, to speak before the select board decision is made. And I would like the, uh, the town staff to reach out to all abutting neighbors and uh, businesses on all sides of the property at which the permit is being requested so that they're notified and if they so wish to attend that they know that we would have uh, a meeting with that discussion and that uh, if they so choose to, to make a comment that we would do that before a decision is made. So I'm in no way dictating this is what we would do. This is just thoughts that I had to begin the discussion, trying to use common sense, also practices that we're doing today, whether it's a, a burn permit or a liquor license, and trying to come up with something that would be 
allow the police to know exactly where these are located. Uh, we don't know where they are today. The assumption is that any existing ones are being run properly. We, we know that people are almost always responsible uh, when it comes to this and they respect that. We understand that and we appreciate it. But we're looking to, uh, to make some progress here to, towards safety and noise and how can ranges also work to be, to be good neighbors, um, as most of them, I assume, are today. So with that stake in the ground, I'd like to open it up to the board to feel free to, um, you know, uh, throw darts at it or, or propose something else. <coughs> Who would like to go first? I mean, I'll start with one question, and that is, sure. do you know of any other towns that have something like this? Um, Does anyone else permit I don't, I don't. private ranges? Not in this sense. Um, we came across two towns who responded to several inquiries from myself, from community development staff, um, and towns of Colchester and Milton do permitting through zoning. Uh, we have not come across something like this yet. Anybody else? Darts, darts are welcome. <laughs> Would we hope to generate a map that we could post on the website to show <coughs> folks where the ranges are, for example, if someone were thinking of buying real estate and they wanted to or not be, you know, depending on their hobbies, maybe they wanted to be close to a couple of ranges where people could actually see them once they're funded. Because all permits would be public record and the request would be for the permittee uh, to have a sketch of the, uh, of the range so it's clear where it's located on the property lines, where it's located regarding buildings, what direction it's pointing, uh, it's a public record. So anybody could, could request it, whether we want to put it on the website or not, I think we can talk about. But if somebody requested a copy of it, it, it would be a public record and therefore available. Andy? Does the, with the, with the permitting and, and or establishment of some sort of criteria um, imply any liability on the town's part? I guess it's the well, as I, I, I read, I, I'd like the permit to state clearly that the liability lies with the range owner and language that says it's not the town inspecting it uh, and, and have, would have no liability, but our, our attorney is here, perhaps we could put him on the spot and see if that's what his thoughts are, if you're willing, Bill. If the town, <coughs> excuse me. Attorney, the question Bill is, uh, good evening. The question is whether the town would have any liability if it in, was involved in a permitting scheme right. for, right. Uh, for ranges. Yeah. Uh, nothing like, as I indicated in my uh, memo, I don't know if you saw that or not. I did. That uh, insulating yourself from liability is very difficult. Anyone can sue. Uh, you can get sued for anything. Successfully getting sued is a different question. My thought was on the liability end. You have insurance, but you also uh, have indemnification language that you could require as part of the permit uh, and insurance requirements on the part of the property owner. That would be your first uh, fallback okay. if the town was ever dragged in because uh, you'd be one of many defendants, I'm sure, if that was the case. The property owner, whoever pulled the trigger, they're going to be a defendant as well. So I'm not overly concerned with any liability okay. issues okay. if you go to a permitting paradigm. All right, thank you. Andy? Um, with regard to the uh, 2006 date, um, I guess the question is: Can we force someone who has a has a range that was that they can prove was in existence prior to that date? Can we, you know, can we have them come through the? permitting process and if so why would we do that if we can't really say no 
to this. Remember, range. we still have uh, some authority over those ranges that were in existence prior to 2006. The, uh, the grandfather clause, or whatever you want to call it, says that they can operate at the same level they were at that time. So by doing the permitting on all ranges, including those, we can establish what that level is so that if there's any complaint, we know if they've been, if they're above or not uh, on that. But to ask your question legally, can we ask them to do the permitting? Again, I, I don't, I don't want to even, uh, I, I think that you, to, uh, you would no. probably want to know the location as yeah. Irene just pointed yeah. out. It's, I don't think that that in any way would, I'm just looking for the language here, prohibit, reduce, or limit discharge. That's what you can't do. Right. with anything that existed as of May 22nd, 2006, which is the date that that legislation was amended. Right. Okay. Other, <laughs> other <laughs> questions, comments? Okay, Elaine. I have a couple They're not coming. Um, different, under, sure. uh, different questions. Um, first of all, under the sketch of property with location and orientation of range. Yes. I think it would also be important for a property owner to indicate prominent terrain features. If there's exposed ledge or there's a hill of some kind, it just, I think, would be a valuable piece of information. Um, and, and I wasn't uh, expecting any uh, professional plat to come in. But even, even you know, uh, right? I wouldn't want to impose a on the property one. owner. Yes. You have to go out and get a surveyor to go get this, you know, parcel map. But just indicating, I mean, I think it's important to know if there's exposed ledge and there's a shooting range near it. I think that's important. Right. And, and by having it uh, reference that they will be following as closely as possible the something similar to the NRA's range source book, it would uh, expect them to to be designed in, in a way where there wouldn't be, you know, a rock ledge that they're shooting into, sure. which they would, I'm sure, wouldn't do today, okay. intentionally, but, uh, yeah, that, that's, that was the purpose of adding that one. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. I have a couple more, if that's sure. okay. Um, defined hours of operation, I think that's the town's responsibility. I don't think that the property owner should be coming in and saying, this is when I'm going to operate my shooting range. I think we have an opportunity here to say that you can operate it from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. and on weekends from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. I don't know that, I think that's our responsibility. I don't know that the property owners could all come in and say that and we'd have a variety of operating hours. I, when I wrote this, I, w I realized that, uh, you know, so, some would maybe would be in the hinterlands and, mm -hmm. and they could operate 24 hours a day and nobody would know or care, right? And I'd hate to put a limitation of hours, you know, too restrictive on them versus somebody who's next to a business mm -hmm. that's trying to make a business and, and allow that 24 hours a day, you know. So I wanted to allow some judgment there anyway that was my intent but it mm. doesn't mean that's but yeah. that but that says to me that there's you know subjectivity in terms of the location whereas if we are saying this is the hours of operation similar to a noise ordinance i feel like that would be a little bit easier to enforce particularly for the neighbors who are impacted but that that's my opinion on that okay so you're saying hours uh, defined hours of operation by the town by the town okay um and just two other things. One question I have is, is if a property owner chooses not to come forward and share that they have a range yes. and we don't know that it exists, how are we gonna know it exists? And so I, I would like to know how we're gonna enforce this because okay. I don't think this includes people going around checking out whether there's ranges right. on property. My thought process was, and that's why I added the fines and penalties, um, just like a dog license. If you have a dog and you don't get it licensed, nobody's gonna come and check. But if that dog gets in a fight and gets reported, well, you're gonna get fined. And the same idea would be here. If, if uh, a complaint is lodged and the police have to go check and they'll take the permit to understand what, what's allowed, and if there is no permit on the property, then whatever fine we 
we had defined uh, would come in, into play. Okay. And my last question is um, referring back to our packet from the October 15th meeting, I recall a, a memo or some questions being answered by Chief Gary, his concerns about permitting. And so I would like to hear from the chief now that we have something more concrete to think about, whether yeah. what his concerns might still be. Okay, chief, um, I show the chief here. Uh, Rick, would you mind uh, giving us your thoughts on? My apologies for putting you on the spot. Concerns about the permit. If you could come up uh, where Bill is as well, please. sent about 10 memos in reference to this. That's right. Um, it was not a specific, you, the memo I'm referring to is you were, you were answering some various questions about okay. um, the firearms, the, the, the previous conversation, and you had a generic concern, a concern about issuing permits. Mm -hmm. It was not specific as to why you didn't think we should do that. Yeah, the one I remember most is talking about a decibel reading in order to dictate noise, and I recommended that that is not going to work well. Um, that you've you've either got to set a date or a time limit um, or hours if you so choose trying to set a decibel reading almost any firearm you're going to shoot is going to be up in the upper level of all of those readings uh, and so we have uh, as you probably know Williston had a case where they tried to set the limits and that was overturned by the Supreme Court basically referring back to what the standard is that it's been operating on a regular basis um, I think permitting is probably, in my opinion at this point, is probably the right way to go. Okay. Whether it's zoning or whether it's through the select board, um, it at least will allow us to set a standard that's reasonable and acceptable and allow us to know where they are uh, and then also have the ability for enforcement if they're not followed. I think you also get the ability to review, right? You get to set the standards and if you're having problems with them, we can look at them. If you have neighbors that have issues, they can come in and talk to you and say these are the issues we have. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, and, and Elaine, that's I did have uh, noise, con you know, limits, <coughs> and I took that out in favor of saying let's define the hours of operation because of feedback that I got from the chief. Yeah, and from the village's experience with noise ordinances with the Champlain Valley Expo, yeah. you know, it could be raining, it could be foggy, the wind could be going a different direction. It's just it's unenforceable. Right. So. Okay. Thank you. Um, Irene, did you have a? Um, yeah, first I'll address the hours. I wondered um, when the audience has a chance to speak if folks think it would be fair to limit the number of hours per day that a range is in use. Because I know neighbors often say that from dawn till dusk they're hearing shots, and they're hearing shots every day of the week, and they're hearing shots all year round. And so I wondered if it's reasonable to ask range owners and range users, would a four hour, would a six hour window every day be offensive to you, or is that something you could work with? When we get there, uh, um, Mike, go ahead. Sorry, I, I, I can wait. I'm, no, I'm go, asking no, go. Uh, another question I had is about the timeline uh, as far as when we envision actually setting up this permitting process and how soon or how long people would have to make the application. I know hunters, especially, are busy this time of year, yeah, uh, because these wouldn't go into effect until the ordinance is, is passed, mm -hmm. and we haven't really come up with a, a a timeline yet although we're coming to budget season and we're probably going to need to put this on the back burner perhaps or maybe not it's up to you but uh, so that we can focus on this and with the intent of bringing getting back to it soon thereafter town meeting say in order to affect the you know the upcoming next uh, next year's uh, season but timeline uh, for permitting I, I don't know it depends uh, on how difficult it is to come up with a permit that we think is reasonable, that you know is workable and enforceable, and all that good stuff. Uh, Michael, you had your hand up. Um, I didn't. You did not. Okay. No, not yet. Uh, but Andy does. Now come back to you, Andy. Andy. Yeah, I'm. I'm uh, wondering how we come up with a consistent and fair criteria for saying no. Um, you know, will we ever say no? What's the, what's the, you know, I, I, um, and I also have concern about the, the background check that you're suggesting. I'm not sure that that's really relevant to a discussion about um, operation of a shooting range. Um, 
and 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 how potentially public that could become the the um, the discussion about background check. Uh, so I, I'm I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm kind of leery of this 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 <coughs> this the the permitting process the approval becoming somewhat arbitrary uh, if if you know it, it's it's a, I, I don't I don't know I don't know how to quantify the uh, a measure to to decide whether to say yes or no um, I know I know that you know concerns are safety and and, and noise um, I've had neighbors come over and ask me to stop playing my ukulele. Um, so, you know, my wife won't let me play the banjo in the house. Uh, so, um, I, you know, I, 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 just, I just don't know, I don't want to end up having an arbitrary uh, decision making process. And yeah, well, the thing would be not to be arbitrary, but to, to have reason. You know, with this waiver, we were talking about a case by case right. decision, and I would assume we could apply the same. You know, methodology there on a case by case, and if we wanted to say these are the key criteria, maybe that's a good thing that for us to be able to guide, and also to let you know the folks who want to do the permit know exactly, you know, how we would would judge it. I guess. Well, could could it's we end up though? Could we end up having a by permit hours of operation discussion too? You know, it, it, I'm not following. Well, if 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 if, uh, if someone works a 12-hour shift and they're not not home uh, certain hours of the day, and the the their neighbor is on a different 12-hour shift and they never overlap anyway, then you know there there might be more freedom there. Or if somebody has a business next door to a place where there's a shooting range, could there be hours of operation that that don't coincide with the the the, the business operation? You know, do, does it have to be a one-size-fit-all discussion, or is it a? Uh, and, and, and I just worry about it being too nitpicky and arbitrary. Um, yeah, I was, I am still more in favor of it being a flexible time based on mm -hmm. the location of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Elaine uh, mentioned that she would prefer it to be defined, and, 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 and that's a fine, you know, position too to, to argue if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's what we'd have to figure out. Um, but I, I think because the properties out there where these would be are diff very different, you know, some near businesses, some yeah. out in the middle of nowhere, um, I have a hard time saying one size fits all uh, because of that. Okay. It's up to us to decide. Mike? Unfortunately, the comments I have are going to be um, impossible, I think, to, um, to be able to put into <coughs> a, a permit form. Um, but that doesn't mean that I can't ask for them anyway. Um, first of all, I, I like the idea of a permit process. I mean, we've gotten feedback from staff um, that they don't want to be anywhere near there. I think that responsibility does fall to, to, to the select board, um, and I welcome that challenge to try and put something together that is going to be fair to all concerned. Um, it would be my hope, and again, it, it, I don't know how you, you couldn't permit this, but it would be my hope that people that have ranges um, would, would do the neighborly thing and just let their neighbors know, if, if they haven't already, that they're going to be establishing a range where it's going to be and just, just approach a neighbor and just let them know what the plan is. I think, um, I think that's common courtesy. It's certainly not regulated, it's not enforced, it can't be, but I think it would be a good first step. Um, the other piece, I, I agree with Elaine. Um, I, I, I've gone back and forth between the dawn to dusk versus setting um, hours. I think that um, setting hours, while not the favorite um, of everybody, I think would be the fairest way to try and establish, you know, somebody not setting their sights at 6.30 in the morning just because it's light enough and they can see. Um, so I, I'd like the idea 
of us at least discussing that. I'm going to be really interested to hear what the shooters themselves have to say. Right, about that's that. what Irene had asked. But you know, for that feedback too. Yep. Okay. Good. Uh, other comments? All right. I'm concerned about environmental impacts, and I don't see any bullet points about that, but I know that uh -huh. over time, you know, there's lead, and um, yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just, again, curious from members of the audience to hear what you would suggest for yourselves and for your friends as ways to mitigate the dangers of the lead and other things that get into the environment with range use. Thank you. So something in the permit about environmental protection, perhaps? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And Andy, you had your hand up too, right? Yeah, um, your, what you, your comments here don't mention the possibility of a public shooting range. I know that's been brought up a number of times. Um, I know there's, there's some resistance to do that because of the potential liability, but I think the bill has told us there's, there's ways around that. And um, I particularly asked the question with regard to you know, like we have the the uh, tree farm is operated by the tree farm management group they they run the whole thing uh, we're, we're essentially not involved they have their own insurance and so forth and I don't you know if a if an organization came to the town and asked to operate in a similar fashion operate a shooting range that we didn't have to operate or supervise or um, maintain you know is that is that uh, it's something that we would ever consider. And what would the purpose be to do that? Well, you could say no to some of these permits, and then people would still have a place to go to go okay. shoot. So, if we if there were an available public one, you would say no more private shooting ranges. Is that what you? No, I wouldn't say no more. I said would there, if if there are some that are, are in questionable locations or have safety risks that we do, you know, we could say no to them without eliminating the possibility of those folks using a shooting range. Or, I mean, people, people in this room have said if there was a place to, a public place to shoot, they may not shoot on their own property. I don't know if that's true or not. I, I do not know if people would, would, you know, join a club where they would have to pay a, a membership fee and travel someplace to go, to go shoot and or make a reservation to get a, to get a lane or, or however that's, that all might work. Um, but I, you know, I didn't, and I don't know if people will bring that up again tonight. Whether there's a possibility of a shooting, that's why I'm asking. I'm bringing it up here because it has come up uh, in in the in the the online surveys that we did, and also discussions in, in the room. Yeah. yeah, if it reduced the number of other ranges out there, I that would be, you know, something that would be positive. That would be a, a reason to to try to pursue it. But from the liability perspective, I'm I'm not real excited about adding additional shooting ranges if it's not going to reduce the total number of, of others. I mean, I would rather offer uh, discount tickets to other existing shooting ranges to our residents to go elsewhere uh, at a discount similar to what we do for, you know, amusement parks and, and things that we sell at, you know, during the summer from the town. So there's, there's other ways to do it than just have a range. But, the reason I didn't talk about that is because it really has nothing to do with the uh, with with the uh, residential, um, you know, permitting process of branches. But that could, you know, if somebody wanted to come forward and propose something, you know, we wouldn't say no right off the bat. I think we'd have to give it due consideration uh, and see where that see where it goes. Larry? And to follow on with that, because I also have spent a lot of time thinking about public range. I'm wondering, given the fact that Dennis in this packet talks about not using the landfill area <coughs> near the CSWD drop-off center. I'd be curious for staff at some point to research, are there other town-owned properties or even school-owned properties where a range <coughs> could be set up that could be safe and could be public? Okay, but that can all be outside the, uh, the, or the firearms ordinance, you know, that we put, put together, right? That's, that could be a development thing that's outside that. Mike? The other thing um, kind of dovetails a little bit with what Irene just said and would probably be, it would definitely be outside of the ordinance. Um, but I would, I would really be interested to know what neighboring municipalities have 
in terms of their ordinances on shooting. Um, the, the, the area um, that has been impacted most recently is Deer Run. There was a well-publicized, um, back at the beginning of this process, there was a well-publicized incident where a round was discharged into a home, thought it came from Jericho, the, the report came back and said that it was inconclusive and that there was no way to know where that round came from. I would be really interested to know what Westford and Jericho um, and other the other neighboring communities have just on their books. It would just it would be a polite inquiry, but or just one that we do on our own. Yeah, but I would I'd be interested to know what's in place around. Greg, I think we have. Uh, it, right? Yeah, as of a few months ago, and I can double check if it's changed. But Westford has no regulations. Jericho has no regulations. Oh, Col Colchester and Williston have, um, uh, I believe it's tied to zoning district, but they have some limitations based on where in town and what, what type of firearm. Then I apologize for wasting everybody's time. <laughs> no, no problem. Okay. Uh, any other comments about the permitting? So included here uh, from, from what was originally drafted, uh, as far as a sketch of the property with location and orientation of range, including terrain features. Um, want to consider should the town define the hours of operation or have them be flexible? Um, so we have to figure that out. And uh, another comment was uh, environmental protection plan or what would you want to call it? Sure. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay, if there's any other discussion, it doesn't have to be on this. Uh, no, so it has to be on shoot, shooting range. Yeah, yeah. The the um, I, I mentioned that I was I had concerns about the background check. Yes. And I, I don't know if you want to note that in your whatever notes you're taking. Okay. Um, the, the, let me just explain why the background check. Yeah. Uh, if we do a permitting process, and say it's a two-year permit, and over those two years, uh, you know, go by, and then the person would come back to to get renewed. And I think as part of our data packet for whether or not we want to renew it is I think it's important to look and see have, have there been violations? Have there been complaints or valid complaints um, for that particular range? And, and by asking um, the chief to either keep track of them or, or do a background check, whatever it would be that they, you know, they would need to do, I would like to see that data before I go ahead and, and renew the application as it is the, or the, the permit as is, or if we we want to modify it based on the feedback we get from what we hear from the police. So that was the reason for doing that. And I would, um, you know, we, we could talk about whether or not we include it or not, but I, I think we'd really be remiss in not having that information, my opinion. Do you want to say anything back? Uh, yeah, yeah. I just, I just didn't realize that you were implying that it would, it would be limited to issues surrounding the the shooting range itself. I thought, you know, drunk driving, uh, wife beating, <coughs> any, you know, any, any infraction would come up and then be, become part of the public record. Right. And that's that's what I that's what, okay. that's that's the biggest part of my concern. But okay. yes, if there are violations against a particular uh, shooting range, I think we shouldn't wait for two years to the two-year renewal to do something about it. I think it needs to be more immediate than okay. than uh, yeah. But that that would require the feedback. Whether yep. you call it a background check, regarding the the range. Okay. If it's yeah, if it's limited to issues associated with the range, I'm I'm certainly okay with that. But if it's it's just a general, overall background check, I'm more concerned. Okay. Okay. Then we can we can keep that limited. Uh, Elaine. That that's what I wanted to add with the liquor okay. license scenario. The chief is getting back to us with liquor license violations only, and I would want to make sure that any background check for like Andy said, for the shooting range would be relevant to just the shooting range we and not get, the person's entire personal life. We actually get other uh, uh, other background uh, violations, mm -hmm. such as speeding tickets and, mm -hmm. and other things uh, for liquor licenses today. Yes, Evan. Well, the chief is here. When, when we, and maybe you could touch on, when we do liquor background checks, it's basically property related and the ownership of 
So maybe that is correct. It's the owner, the property itself you're dealing with, the owners that are associated with the establishment. Um, there is, it's not through us, but you guys do get a criminal history background mm -hmm. check through the state of Vermont on those owners. Uh, and anything that's related to violations of that establishment or misusing, uh, mis like serving alcohol or anything that's related that you may need to make a decision about granting that permit. Uh, but there is a criminal history that's done, mm -hmm. not through us, um, with the state of Vermont of the owners or the people that are applying for the application. And one of them is while sometimes we do not ticket a person for DUI on that establishment, we come to find out where you were. Yep. And that is attributed back to that principal place of business. So that's kind of the background stuff I think we're talking about. Um, and, you know, we're, we're not trying to limit, you know, what, but we are trying to balance public safety and neighbors uh, and neighbors' rights. We've had the complaints from businesses trying to operate from residents of neighbors. And I think one of the things that's important and is brought up, when were you established? Because mm -hmm. somebody moves in next to you, all right, they, they, they should either know that something is there or now you move in and you complain about your neighbor who's been there for 20 years. We could at least say, no, they, they've been here for 20 years. We could talk to them about what they're doing, but those types of things get balanced. But we can, regarding background range, say regarding range violations. That they mm -hmm. So the first round, we would have no, no feedback. We would just have all the other information. We wouldn't have any background check. Not until the renewals came in would we have that. Okay. Uh, did you have a hand up? Yes. Um, the word background check. I'm not a gun owner, but to me it has certain connotations. So if we could change those words, background check, to say, call it something else, a review of something, you know, but sure. review uh, of suitability. But if we could use just our own unique phrase that doesn't say background check, which to me has all kinds of connotations that I don't know that we want to introduce. And maybe that's getting at what Andy was saying earlier. Okay, but the, 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 the data we're looking for is any permitted range, have there been violations? Right. And we exactly. want to know that before right. we do a relative right. range. Right. Okay. And that's in certainly incentive to make sure, you know, to make sure the ranges are operating as, as permits. Yes. yes. Okay. Anything else you want to discuss before we open it up to the public? It's a good start. Thank, good? You. Thank you. Everybody? Okay. Open it up. Okay. Right away. So this is the part of the uh, meeting where I'd like to open it up to the public input. Hopefully you were able to hear what we were talking about. Um, so I'd just like to review some things and just, just say that as always, please keep your comments respectful, brief, and focused on shooting on sports shooting ranges tonight. There'll be opportunities at subsequent meetings when we open it up to the whole uh, ordinance. But again, tonight we're defining it to just sports shooting ranges. Uh, again, please do not interrupt or have side conversations while others are speaking, just to uh, let's show everyone uh, that their due respect. Uh, direct all your comments to me, the uh, select board chair. Um, speakers will be given a, a limited time for their comments, and if time is running out and you're getting close to the, uh, that time limit, either Evan or I will uh, clearly let you know that your time is uh, about up. And again, please be respectful of others' time. If uh, someone ahead of you makes a point that you had wanted to say, uh, you can just say ditto or I agree with uh, the person that just spoke uh, moments ago. Uh, the select board will listen. It, again, this is not a negotiation or a dialogue. Uh, as stated before, um, we may not produce an outcome that you want and we are painfully aware that, we, that it's excruciating for you to watch, uh, to watch happen. But we are attempting, as Evan said, we're trying to balance many interests, including safety, rights, traditions, and many other things. So uh, is that clear how we're gonna do this? Okay, I see no questions. So what I'd like to do is just by a show of hands, if you would, so I know about how much time to give to each. Uh, how many people, by show of hands, would like to speak tonight on this? Okay, so one, one two, three, 
12. Okay, so how much? Okay, so we'll do uh, we'll do three minutes uh, per person, and we'll just start. Uh, that was 12, right? We said 12. 12. Okay. And even go left to right. Or yeah, right let's, left. we'll start. We'll go left, <laughs> and we'll go to the right. Last time I think went the other direction. So I saw a hand. Tim, you had I'm your hand up. I'm gonna save mine till the end. I want to be one of the last ones. Again. Okay, you want to be closer. Not so much closer. Just I want to hear what other people got to say first. Okay. Good enough. Uh, yes, Brad. Are you, yeah, if you could, uh, you want to turn on the microphone? It's a drill. Okay, <laughs> yeah, and, and I didn't say it, but yes, please do what Brad's doing and, and, and use the mic and state your name and your address for the record, please. Yeah, Brad Kennison, 112 Dixie Hill Road. You're going to be talking to me. Looking at you. Yes, sir. Um, I'm referencing uh, Mr. Ellis's memorandum uh, dated November 2nd, and in there, referencing shooting ranges that were established prior to May of 2006. Um, it says that uh, in number 2291, number 8, shall not prohibit, reduce, or limit discharge at any existing sport shooting range as the term is defined in 10 VSA 5227. And then it goes on to say the phrase has been interpreted by the Supreme Court to specifically restrict municipal authority to prohibit, reduce, or limit discharge at any sport shooting range in existence as of May 2006. So no matter what you establish for your guidelines, and maybe you're thinking more of about shooting ranges that were established after two, uh, May 2006. Um, but anyway, it doesn't appear that you have the authority to restrict the shooting ranges that were existed at the time. Um, so you can have a permitting process or whatever, but According to the statute, it doesn't appear that you have that authority to um, to limit or restrict the use of, of, the, of the shooting range that was established at that time. Okay. J just a quick response. The answer is yes, we do. Uh, as long as it's not restricting you below where you were at 2006. If you go above that, yes, we can knock you that's, that's, back down. That's true. Yeah. I understand but that's, that. But as far as any other restrictions, restrictions below that, that's correct. The, the yeah. legislature was clear. So. Why would you go through the process of, um, you know, the permitting process for someone who had an arranged already existing where you really can't restrict it other than what you just pointed out? We want to, well, I said this is not a negotiation or a discussion. But no, no, it's, it's um, so that we know what that level is. Right now, we don't know where the ranges are or at what level they're operating. This permit will allow us to document that, all of them, including those before 2006, what level were you running at? So that we know if a violation or a complaint is made, we can go, well, oh, they're above it. So yeah, that's a violation. Or they're below it. We can't do anything. So we need that information. I don't understand how you're going to establish that level of usage. It'll, the burden of proof will be on the owner of the property. I'm not sure what the law says about that, but I guess we'll find out. Okay, yes. thank you. Okay, thank Take you. Care. Okay, that was that was good. Okay, so who's next on this side? Um, okay, we'll go here and then we'll come to you, Jeff, sir. Okay, again, your 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 name and uh, address, and uh, you'll be will, talking to me. Uh, I'm on uh, Browns River Road, um, right for the Essex. Um, the problem I have is uh, is with the burden of proof being on the landowner, uh, and I honestly don't know how any person here that has a shooting range on their own property, how we go about proving that it's been there, number one, how we go about establishing any type of, um, do you want number of shots fired per hour, per minute, per day, per week, per year, um, there's, there's absolutely no way to establish any of these items that you're asking us to provide you. Um, the burden of proof is, is an impossible thing for, uh, for us to establish for you. Um, it, it seems like this is kind of a loaded, uh, a loaded thing where um, this is, feels like a very underhanded way to strip away landowners' rights uh, to shoot on our own property, um, to, to tell me as a landowner that I can and can't do things on my own property certain times of day. Um, I, I just have a, a real problem with with a board telling landowners what they can and can't do on their own property that we've been doing for years and years and years. Um, so I, I guess for me, it feels like 
it's a, a foregone conclusion that you're basically trying to take away all of our shooting rights uh, in the town of Essex. Uh, to me, this feels very similar to uh, multiple votes on town merger where we voted no, and yet the board continues to consolidate things here and things there, um, even though people spoke out and said they didn't want it. So yet again, I just feel like um, there's an agenda and we're just not being um, listened to or um, that, like I said, there's a foregone conclusion um, that you just want to take our shooting rights away. Uh, and that's unfortunately how I feel. Okay. Thank you. Okay, um, sir? Albert Gentis, I live on Gentis Road in Essex. Um, we were told, and I pursued it, we've had a range on our property since 1948. Now, do you want me to prove it? I can't because those individuals are no longer with us. But I can go and prove it until 1955. That's when I was learning to shoot. So I don't know, you know, when you talk about noise, I gotta admit, sometimes it looks like we're having a range war. It sounds like we're having a range war there. So be it. We were there long before houses developed around us, and you know, I just and uh, I was told by an individual he's no longer on the involved with the town. That seems how we've been there so long that we're grandfathered, and there's not a whole lot that you can do. I'm sure you can probably try, but no one I asked the police chief then, you want to come look at it? He says, no, as soon as we look at it and we say it's okay, we're on the hook also. So he says, no. So whether we have different opinions here, which obviously we do, uh, somebody's right and somebody's wrong. So I'm just saying I'm against any regulations on hours. We only have a family in our Invited friends here to shoot. It's not open to the public, and we have, you know, intentions of staying there. I guess. Okay. And whether that's the right thing to say or not. But. Okay. So, so burden of proof is a big one for you, right? Well, being able to. I'm 72 okay. years old, and it's been there ever since I've been alive. Okay. So, what else you want? Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, yes, gentlemen, with the beard. Hey, it's hard to come and talk to the board because I don't usually do this, although I do work for the town of Richmond and I've dealt with some select boards. And the thing that kind of confuses me a lot right here is that usually a board decides to make a decision based on a need. And number one, I don't see any need. There is no safety issue in Essex. Zero. Zero incidences. We've proven that. So there is no need. Number two, every one of these meetings that I've been to has been overwhelmingly in favor of the position that I have, which is no change to the firearm ordinance, no change to the shooting range. I agree completely with what he said, and I agree completely what, with what he said. I've lived in the same place since I was born. We've had a shooting range on my property since 1948. All my neighbors know that, and I don't have any problem with my neighbors. So if I decide I want to grow squash and the neighbor doesn't want me to grow squash, I'm going to have to come in and get a permit to grow squash and somebody doesn't agree with it? My neighbors don't have a problem with my shooting because I get along with my neighbors and I respect my neighbors and that's what you're supposed to do. And you're making a big issue out of something here when I think the board should spend a little more energy on mediating some of these people that actually have the problem because there's no problem on Old Pump Road. My name's Kendall Chamberlain, that's where I live. So I just find this extremely frustrating because an ordinance change, there's no way that we're gonna change the board's opinion, is there? You did the place speak, we participated in the place speak, we overwhelmingly swamped the place speak with people that did not wanna change the firearm ordinance. You're still pursuing it. Now you're gonna to go to public hearings. We're gonna fill those public hearings with all your residents that don't want this, and you're still gonna do it. Then you're going to tell me that i got to come in and get a permit to do something that I've been doing all my life where I live. I'm really beginning to feel discriminated against as a long-time Essex resident who stayed here, made a life here, works here. Am I going to have to move to Jericho? 
because I'm on the property line of Jericho. You know, I can step across the line in Jericho and do all the shooting that I want at any time. What is going on in Essex? That's my question. Thank you for your time. Uh, yes, sir. With the, yeah, and then I'll come to you. Sir. No, not now. Uh, yes. I don't have your name, so it's hard to... Well, we'll discuss that in a second. My name's John Bourbon. I live out on 348 Browns River Road, about halfway between Hallett's and Pettengill Road. That's in the middle of the blue area, big floodplain. Um, no real issues back here. I've owned this house since 1988, and I've been shooting in my backyard, literally my backyard, since 1988. And if need be, I can get signed affidavits from the people that shot with me, and we can establish that. Now, I don't know, I haven't heard you use the word affidavit yet, but I assume that would be the process to go about establishing some sort of um, history. Is that oh, we, we don't know what process that would be. This is Fair just enough. an outline of what we're thinking about. Anyhow, 1988, a couple times a week, sometimes pistols, sometimes rifles, you know. And in fairness to my neighbors, I wait till she's not home. When I work 12-hour nights, I get up a little early, I look out in her driveway, there's no car in the driveway. Now's a good time, much like the kinds of things that you said a few minutes ago. Um, never had a complaint. Never. M other parts of my comments I'd like to make in the issue of brevity is that all of your ideas for these permits seem designed to keep us from shooting as opposed to quantifying the amount of shooting and whatever. It, um, I'm not real fond of getting additional government involvement in me doing things on my property. And the concept of having the local law enforcement people come take a look at it kind of bothers me also, because I remember when I tried to get a silencer, I took my Form 4 to the police chief, I believe it was Gary, and he told me he wasn't going to sign it, because he says, you might be a good guy today, but you might be a bad guy tomorrow, and I won't be on the hook for when you do something bad. You know, that's not really giving me a lot of faith in the whole process of getting law enforcement to look at my, my surroundings. I didn't do nothing bad before then. I haven't done nothing bad since then. But in two years from now, five years from now, when there's a new group of people either on the board or perhaps in law enforcement, will I have to prove myself again? I don't know. This whole idea of two years, every now and then, every two years getting permit redone, kind of gives me the same kind of heartburn because I don't know who's going to be on those tables in two years, and what their views will be. So I think that pretty much addresses my main points, and thank you for your time. Thank you. OK. Uh, yes, sir. I won't stand up. I'm just got one quick question. Name? OK. Could you, could you say your name, sir? My name Gentis. I live on Gentis Road. OK. I've wanted that land all my life. And my question is, I predator them. If you go set restrictions, that means I can't shoot on my own property after those hours. Well, we're talking <laughs> only about sport shooting ranges. Just sport. That's what we're talking about today. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you for clarifying Okay. That. Okay. Uh, who's next? Uh, you'll, Do you want to go? No, go ahead. No, you're right there. You'll, I'll have you next, oh. sir. Yeah. Brian Murphy, I'm 187 uh, Towers Road Extension. Um, I'm going to show you a map because I think context is everything. And I'm going to, I've got for people at the table, um, I don't have a copy for everyone, but I have enough for the tables and I just want to. So, uh, I have no doubt that there are many people here that fire on the range and are very safety conscious. I have no doubt that. Um, but the problem is you get into subjective uh, notions of what safety is. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit of my world to give some context of one landowner, and I'm not going to speak that everyone has this experience, but it's mine. 
So in this uh, map, you'll see uh, a couple parcels. Uh, you'll see 187 Towers Road is marked. That's my parcel with my residence marked with the white letters residence. Um, my neighbor, um, and the good thing is I've talked to my neighbor several times and we've improved over time. And if he was here, if he was sitting right here, we'd have the same conversation. Um, I worry about the fact that if I didn't have a good relationship with him, that I wouldn't be able to have these conversations. But um, this shooting range, and we'll leave aside for the moment the legal question, what is a sports shooting range, which isn't everything. Um, uh, he, he and visitors will shoot from what's, uh, there's an X where you see the discharge area. And that can move, but that's typically where it is, but frankly, it could be north of where the swimming pool is. But uh, when you're shooting at the dirt pile, um, which is about 12 feet high, uh, my entire property on either side of that is exposed. The field where you see the white letters, where we walk and we take brush and stuff like that, becomes completely unusable when someone's out there with a firearm. And in fact, if there's like a 15% deflection of the dirt, dirt pile, um, it's coming into my house. And um, do I think it's gonna happen? No, am I fearful of it? Absolutely. I, I, I wouldn't be here if I didn't care for my family. And uh, there's, there's, no, there's no berms, there anything. it's just a dirt pile into which <laughs> folks shoot. Sometimes he's there, sometimes it's unsupervised people that I don't know who they are. In fact, a couple times I went there and nobody knew who the landowner was. Um, and so I've also on Google Maps measured the distance between my residence and the discharge area and it's under 750 feet, which is what happened when Dr. Rice was shot at his dining room table having dinner. A bullet went right through his head. Um, and the testimony in that case was the uh, person that operated the range said that his attorneys argued he had done everything he thought to make the range safe, but with 750 feet, there was just no room for error. 20 seconds. Okay. Um, the other thing, which is, it, by the way, if you uh, shoot over that dirt pile, you're going to end up in Indian Brook if you extend that line. Um, and the other thing is there are four sport shooting ranges within 15 miles. Two are 10 miles away and two are 15. The LaBerge range is free and it's 15 miles away. So the notion that you can't shoot, if there's people that can prove they've got a safe range, I'm not going to get in their way. But frankly, you're not going outside when they're shooting you know, and walking in my field. None of you would. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Okay, sir. Breck Norton, Sand Hill Road. Um, I've lived on Sand Hill Road since October 1963, and my family's been in Vermont since before it was Vermont, so I'm actually a real Vermonter. The board has zero right to make any of these existing ranges get a permit. Zero. Absolutely zero. And I can see where it's headed. It's just one little thing after another, and it's all just a squash. Em. It's plain as day to me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, who on this side? Um, we'll come to, uh, yeah, you, sir, and then, uh, ma'am, after. Marvin, to say I'm breaking no road against any additional legislation. I think we will be able to keep our rangers. But the only question I have right now is what do you consider adequate proof that the range was established prior to 2006? We don't know yet. Okay. It's just, an, again, an outline idea. We don't have details of how we would do any of it yet. Sarah Salatino, 68 Brigham Hill Road. Um, oh boy, there's so many issues at hand here. It's not a black and white issue. I totally get, I just want people to know that I have a business that I've had for nine years. Um, it's a plant nursery. I grow my own perennials. We have lived at, uh, my husband and I have lived at this address for 21 years. Um, when we moved in, there was hunting in the back rifle season, musket season. No big deal. The Johnsons, who are three houses down, 
had a shooting range way up in the woods. You hardly ever heard it. When you did, it was like, oh, there's the Johnsons. What a cr couple of crazy folks, wonderful folks. Um, and I understand landowners' rights. And it's my right as a landowner, being there for 21 years, to have peace in, in my, my land, on my land. I moved to the country. Um, I grew up in the country. I have lived in, in the wilds of Big Sur studying plants for months at a time. So I totally understand the, the whole living in the, off the land vibe. Um, and I also want people to understand that recently shooting ranges have moved into my section of the woods in Brigham Hill Road. Nobody ever came to any of the neighbors and said, is it okay if I do this? I will tell you, we have this wonderful vet who lives nearby. He came to me maybe four years ago and said, hi, a friend came by with, with a um, high caliber rifle. We have a shooting range set up way up way in back of the land. It's gonna be really noisy. Do you mind if I shoot? How could I refuse? It was so nice of him that he had this ability to come and ask. Now, my business is plagued. Um, it's been very quiet in my neck of the woods, um, but um, on several days, especially um, Mother's Day, from one o'clock in the afternoon till sunset, there was a, a semi-automatic weapon. It was so loud, I had customers leaving because they couldn't stand it, the, the noise. And I, I, my customers bring in not only money to my business, but money to other Essex businesses. Um, and I feel like I have a right to do my business um, in peace and quiet. If there was a way that the, the, shoot, the shooting range that is next door could put up a, a, a special diamond bubble, if you will. 30 seconds. Okay, thank you. Wouldn't that be great if we could all live in peace? But it has been really frustrating. I wish there was a, a, a way that we could all work together I understand your right to have your shooting range for, for all, so many years, but it really pains me when my rights are not respected as a landowner who's been there for many years. And I feel it's very dangerous, and I really feel like something could happen with this uncivility. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. There's a house there now. There's a business there now. And they put up a 
proper berm. They put up a 35 foot berm. They put up steel plates or whatever it is you do to make it safer. I hope that these are things that you will all consider as you are creating whatever it is you're going to create. Thank you. Good points. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Okay, uh, we should have one more out there. Yes. Uh, and then we'll end with Tim. So if you have um, if you have six forest road SX. So uh, we we heard from every side, and everybody is very focused on how they're going to prove if they are the range or not. Um, and, and I think it really distracts from the issue at hand. The two people who have talked here. I don't have it, I haven't had any issue with range that have been here forever. There are issues with people who've just started to shoot. One of them, it's an AR-15. That's the map that you have, you have here. A lot of you here are military. I am one too. You, t you tell me that this is safe, it is not safe. So th the real issue here is ballistic. You wanted quantification, that's quantification. You and I know that. It's ballistic. You cannot fight ballistic. You cannot pretend that it doesn't exist. If that bullet is going to ricochet, it will end up in Brian's house. That's just, just the way it is. So yeah, you may have a range for a long time. I shoot at a range. I'm a range safety officer. I, I, I have kids, 8 to 13 shooting. And trust me, I have my eyes on them constantly. So, but it's at the, the Jericho Ranch where everything is very safe. Doesn't mean that we we'll never have an accident. I respect your right to do whatever you want in your land. But what happened, and that's a question to the chief, when the bullet extends from your, from your yard? You have to think about that. And instead of, okay, so I think we all agree, the, the idea of proving you, that your range is prior to 2006 is, is probably not feasible. Let's work together so that we don't have people who are shooting air 15 because by the way, you guys are hunting in the lots adjacent to it. Don't forget that. That may affect you too. So think about that and let's work together so that we can find a solution where those people are not affected the way they are. I'm under the fire audience. I don't really care, but it, it is something that is the other. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yes.
I don't know, majority or minority here that has that has shooting ranges. But I know you're also hearing from concerned citizens that are concerned about the noise in their in their neighborhoods, concerned about their safety, concerned about ricochets, concerned about bullets that are lodging into the side of their homes. This just happened down the street from me. So you can't say that there haven't been accidents or there hasn't been, that there's no danger. There's always a danger. There's a danger every time you go out in the woods to go hunting. That's why we bright, wear bright orange. So I think we just have to find a way to come together with this from both sides. I only think I think the only way we're going to do this is from a point of moderation and not division. And we have to find something that's going to actually help us all find an answer that helps us all feel safe, but also not burdened by the law. Thank you. That's all. Thank you. Okay, so that should be. Oh, Tim, you wanted to be the I closer. Just, okay, so this would be the last one. I necessarily want to be closer, but I got a couple things. Okay. <laughs> so, Tim Pham, 171 Brigham Hill Road. My original question at the very beginning, or what I wanted to start with, was when you put the term sports shooting range, are you, is how general was it as far as, you know, if it consists of me pulling my rifle out, going in my backyard and shooting four rounds down range to verify that it's on target for the season and then I put it away? Or is it for the enthusiast gun owner that's out there wanting to shoot year round, multiple rounds, have a gun collection that they want to try various calibers, all that good stuff. So the, de the description of the shooting range because should you take action and decide that everybody needs to be permitted and whatnot. Um, for example, at my house, I started shooting or target practicing down there and it's sighting in target practicing. It is not a, uh, a process to where I'm going all the time. It's usually about four to 10 shots, depending on if it's a new rifle, an old rifle, whatever. Long story short, bought the house in 2006. So obviously, uh, that's the only proof I have to show you that my range has been established since before your, uh, that. The, the hardest part about it for me is I envy your position, or I, I'm not envious of your position, <laughs> for the simple fact that that Matt, or that gentleman that handed that in, right. scares the hell out of me as a shooter and as a hunter, okay? The stuff that Sarah has to deal with Okay, it's unfortunate because where I live, I live pretty nice up on the hill, away from everybody else. I can see some houses, but they're substantially away. And where I shoot is in between two ledges, down a valley, into the ground type of thing. You know, it's ricochets, uh, bounces a sound like up and away type of thing. So probably not too many people hear me. The issue that Sarah deals with I can hear from my house, and I was like, oh my God. I could not, to be that, as close as Sarah is to the neighbors that she has, which are the minimum setback away when they develop the land, okay? That would be excruciating to me to hear that much shooting go on at one time. Unfortunately, that's what I don't envy for you guys, is to have to, I think there needs to be a, a differentiation from that because where Albert's been shooting all his life up on his property, I'm sorry for all of you guys that moved in next to him. Sorry. He's been there forever. It's just like an old farmer that's owned all that farmland down there. That's his property. He's paid taxes on it forever. He deserves to do and continue <coughs> his traditions, which almost all these traditions are gone by the wayside now. Everything's <coughs> just kind of going away and and the way millennials come up through, there, there's no tradition. There's no, there's no care. And we're eroding that kind of behavior away every time we take one more piece of it out of it. So I'm against making changes to all this stuff for the simple fact that there is no easy answer to it. And not everybody's going to be happy, but like a few other people said, we kind of got a feeling as to where <coughs> this board in general wants to go with it. And as far as I'm concerned, this topic will never stop until all those firearms are at the border. Not here in the state, not here in Essex. And 
I don't think it's fair for any of us to have to deal with it. The safety issues, I have a problem with. I don't know if you can figure out a way that if a neighbor could call and use the names like a Sarah and say, listen, this is going on. Yep, can you wrap and it up? if the police can go out there, yep, another burden on the police, and say, listen, where are you shooting? I'm shooting that way. No, come on, this is unsafe. She's got a business to deal with, I get it. Um, where Kendall lives, I know where he lives, been there all my life too. You can't, you're not gonna affect anybody. And then as far as, you know, it's just it's just one of those things. You got. I don't know that you can legislate it because it's hard to legislate stupid but, I mean, I don't know. Looking at that picture scares the hell out of me. But you ought to be able to go to that property right there that is shooting towards <coughs> that gentleman's property and shut it down. I do believe in that. I do believe in that. Because that's, something has to be done about that. Thank, thank you for your comments, Tim. Okay, so that was everybody plus two. Uh, I'd like to bring it back to the board. What I do is there... One the person that's dying to speak that hasn't that that didn't raise their hand before. If not, uh, I ask for one clarification. Yes, Brian. <clears throat> um, I didn't or whatever hear his name is, Brad. All of what the had to say. Is there going to be any discussion about a public shooting? Are you going to go here? Are you going to discuss that? Uh, it sounds like in the future the board would like to discuss that, but that's not on the docket for tonight. Okay, I just wanted the clarification. Yeah. Okay, so as I said, now we have the public input. Thank you so much for your feedback and your, your thoughts. Uh, and Tim's right, this is not uh, an envi enviable position to be in. We're trying to balance you know, your rights and traditions with your rights uh, to enjoy your, your, your property uh, the way you want, the main, in a safe way. Um, so it's a, it, it is a difficult thing to do. We're not trying to strip anybody's rights. What we're trying to do is get a handle on shooting ranges and where they are. So we can see maybe they're more uh, like this that we saw on this map. And boy, wouldn't that be good to know? So that we can, we can address that before uh, another incident like Professor Rice, uh, the, the, the tragic death uh, of Professor Rice happened. So um, it, it is a tough, uh, situation that the board is in, but we don't uh, we don't shy away from from hard work. This is uh, it's painful for all to watch. It's painful to do it, but we all love our community. Uh, it's a tight community, and we're hoping to come up with something that is a, a reasonable uh, position. Uh, chances are nobody would be happy with the position, but uh, we're going to do the best we can with the information we have and uh, our requirement for the uh, the health and safety of the community. So, all right, with that lecture, sorry, I'm going to bring it back to the board. Um, so we had talked about the idea of permitting. We had some outlines. We made some adjustments to it. Uh, as we've done before, now that we heard input on, on this from the public who's here tonight, um, is there any changes you'd like to consider? Uh, so Elaine, I'll come to Andy. Elaine? Um, I have no changes to offer at this time, but what I do want to say based on what we heard in the audience is the difference between burden of proof and evidence of existence. Okay. And I think it's very important that we know where these places are, and we may find as we continue this conversation that establishing the age of certain ranges may be impossible and we need to acknowledge that yes yes that is absolutely true thank you okay Andy um, I'm I'm in favor of getting a catalog of where all the shooting ranges are so we know where they are um, I have concerns about the need to renew them, because um, as as has been explained, they go with the land. So even if the property owner changes, the shooting range continues to exist. Is what? Yeah. Okay. He's nodding his head. Um, and so, and 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 I I think that if 
some, you know, and, and some violation occurs, and, I, and we haven't defined what those violations could be. Um, I think it needs to be brought up immediately and not wait for two years. So I, I don't understand. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm less uh, in favor of having uh, folks come back uh, every other year to say, yep, I, sh I sighted my gun in with, I shot four bullets last year. Um, because I think that's the other thing that we determine that a sport shooting range is anything from somebody who's an enthusiast who's out there every day with their guns all the way down to planking at a pie plate on a tree. Um, and there's no, there's no official definition of that. Um, so anyway, I, I'm not in favor of, I'm, I'm less in favor of having the renewal discussion. Um, I would like to know where they are and I, and I think that you know, given you know, maps, the, this picture that was given to us, that there should be some, at least some safety review. Um, you know, I, I, as long as it doesn't you know, <coughs> put us in, in, a, in a liability situation. Um. Okay, so what if there's a change or, or if the shooting range moves? Would it need to get re-permitted or would that original permit still suffice? Oh, that's a good question. And that was the uh -huh. idea of this renewal thing: is that if there are changes, we'd want to we'd want to be able to document that so that we now know where they are. If they if they were to move. Yeah. One quick addition to that, Max. Uh, real quick, Tim. Just with what you just said right there, what happens once you establish this catalog? and a landowner leaves, does that shooting range, so if, if I went out and bought another piece of property, mm -hmm. whether it had an established range on it or not, say I thought it was a good place to have one, or say I found out it had one, and I plan on using it, is the establishment from the original owner who owned it, or because I just bought the property, I'm no longer allowed? Or what if, I, what if there was never one there and I want to do it? Establish one. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm not sure. So I'm just saying. Yeah, th things to consider, Tim. I think the yeah. the, the, the uh, advice from our legal counsel is right. that it goes with the land. It, it follows. The so so if you if you purchase a piece of property that has an established shooting range on it, you may use it. Gotcha. And and if it's a grandfathered shooting range, it continues to be grandfathered. Is my understanding. Now grandfather meaning the 2006. Yep. Point. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Mike. <coughs> I've, I've been target shooting since I was 10. We had the perfect lot for it. It was, we had, my, my dad had a single shot, 22 P shooter, and we used to just put, we put beer cans on a stake and we'd shoot into a hill. Nobody behind us, it was perfect. I have zero problem with hunters, zero. We have absolutely no Injuries, fatalities, nothing. The, the tree warden confirmed it. What bothers me is the same thing that bothers Mr. Murph. I'm, I'm gonna miss your name, I'm sorry. Brian Murphy. This scares the hell out of me, mm -hmm. and that's why, that's why I'm doing this. What I'd like to see, instead of hunters telling us, or, or shooters, telling us why they feel like they're infringed on, stand up and go knock on this guy's neighbor's door and tell him that that range is insufficient. We've gotten letters over the last six months, same names at the bottom of the letter, same names. Form a committee. It doesn't have to be a legal committee, but form a committee and help us out here. Help us out, help us do the right thing. Because the last thing I wanna do is take away your ability to target shoot. But damn it, I don't want somebody coming here and telling me that they pulled a round out of their house. 
So you know what? Help us out here a little bit. Stand up, go see this guy. You don't have to act like the police or anything else. Just go see him. Please take, go. Take, Please take. go. I've already talked to him. Please go. I, okay. I <laughs> You've had conversations. So. Then I'll tell you what. Others. My, my, my request still stands. Help us out here. Help us find the ranges that are insufficient, that aren't <laughs> safe. Yeah, you need to actually just raise your hand and not shout out. That goes for everybody. And then you wait to be recognized. We brought it back to the board, and I need to follow that protocol, okay? There's going to be time afterwards, before this ever becomes a, an ordinance, for further input. But tonight, I explained how we're going to run this. I'd like to keep on that tack. Everybody understood that, and I'd like to apply that. Thank you. All right. So I wonder if instead of having a two-year automatic, you got to come back in and talk to us again or whoever's here in our seats. Um, what if whenever there's a, what if there's a list of things that require someone to come back in, if and when they happen. If the owner of the range doesn't change, you don't have to come back in. Once it is established, once this mandatory survey we're doing, if we could call it a survey, I don't want to get all into permitting and make it this onerous thing, but I really do want to have a survey, and if I call it a survey, no one's going to take it seriously. So I think we have to call it a permit, at least up front, get an idea of where all of these ranges are, and once we know, unless you sell your property, unless you change the direction of your range, unless you take down the berms and the things that are protecting it that we approve in the first round, you never have to see us again. You can have your range for 50 or 70 or 90 years. As long as it stays safe, you're still in charge of it, and so forth. I want to make this easy on folks, and with all due respect, I really don't know the outcome of these conversations. I've been to many properties. I've talked to many people on all sides of this issue. I'd love to know where it's going to end, but I, with all due respect, I do not know where this is going to end. I'm along for this ride, and I'm learning every day. And I thank you for all of your input, but please don't assume that you know where this is going to go because I certainly don't. Okay, thank so you. so it sounds like we want to get rid of the uh, automatic renewal in favor of some other other thing. Is that right? Or Andy, you're looking I'm, surprised. I'm, I'm, the, the words you used is to get rid of the automatic renewal. Not the. I'm sorry. I mean the, the, the two. two the, 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 okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Good clarification. I meant the uh, the. Uh, the regular renewal, say of every two years or four years, whatever, but not do that, but do it if there's a land transfer or if a substantial change to the range occurs. Is that, are those the two? That For I now, I, I For mean, now? I'm, I'm open to suggestions. Maybe there are other things that would yeah. trigger us needing to re-examine your range, but. What I'd like to do for tonight as, as a conclusion, as opposed to, to trying to define everything, is at least get an, an idea if this is the direction we want to go then I'd like the uh, staff to be able to work with what maybe a permit would look like, maybe what the, uh, not the burden of proof, but the establishment of the date, what that criteria may look like, to let them work with legal and, and our law enforcement, and then come back with a draft at some time in the future. But if we think that the permitting thing is the way to go with roughly what we talked about here, <coughs> with questions about, uh, you know, maybe the renewal piece. Um, I don't think we have to get too much more detail <coughs> for now, for yeah. now right. to, to give at least some direction to the staff to, to see what they can pull together for. Is that reasonable, Evan? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah I, I no, no, I, I mean, Bill, you're here, you're listening, correct? And we've taken notes. We've got lots of input uh, to go with. Yes. And so, yeah, I think uh, given some a construct of what and with some what, some options within that construct we can put it up in a couple of months okay all right so if, if we're good it's with starting to be budget season are we good then I'm glad you're not rushing. with the uh, with the idea and we're not going to be in this we're not going to be in this hunting season anyway so right, we're not going to talk this season so are we good with where we are today for shooting ranges with the idea of 
some type of permitting. Uh, we had a lot of input. I think you have plenty of notes. I outlined it, and then um, they'll come back at a future meeting. And again, maybe we want to put give them plenty of time. It sounded like maybe some months. That'll give us time to do the budget, and we can pick this up on the other side, uh, and hopefully in time to be able to affect, if we decide any change, to affect uh, and get the outreach and the signage and stuff in place before, um, you know, November of next year. So, I mean. Just a couple more thoughts. Um, sure. The more I think about this, the more the 2006 date doesn't mean anything to me. You can have a range for as long as you want. If it's unsafe, it's unsafe. I'm looking at safety. I'm looking at noise. But I'm not looking at a date, per se. So, again, that's something I want to explore more in our conversations. But I'm more concerned about things that are not the date that you establish your range and how your use has varied. Because you could be a very heavy range user. As long as you're safe, I don't care. Um, I had something else to say about it. OK, well, we can come back to you when you remember. Okay, okay. I mean, it was determined by law that that date was a key date as far as ranges are concerned. So I don't think you can get rid of it. I'm not looking to shut I, them down. I, 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 neither, neither am I. Okay. I want them safe too. I just, I thought I said that. Yeah, yeah. But I, I don't think you're going to be able to get around. I don't think we're going to be able to get around the okay. date. Okay. Any final comments uh, from Elaine? No, thank you. Nothing. Andy, final comments? Okay, Irene, did you remember what you wanted to say? No, but I'm sure I'll think of it next time. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. okay, yeah. So, Shortly. yeah. It sounded like there were some, a few other comments that wanted to be said. Tim, did you want to take a moment? I can take 30 seconds. Okay, Do we, could you just go up to the mic again yeah. just to make sure everybody well, can hear? It was just an what Mike said about helping you guys out and whatever, yes. and getting up and trying to confront people or whatnot. One of the guys that shoots on our road a lot, or was for a lot, I haven't heard him in a while. I actually made an attempt one day to go down there and speak to that individual selfishly to basically tell him, you know, relax, calm down a little bit till you guys get this all figured out so you're not giving you guys more ammunition to go against us. That's the way I looked at it, honestly. Um, talked and talked to the neighbor who then told me, you don't want to go over there. The guy will meet you at the door, packing both sides, doesn't seem quite a little bit right there. And I'm like, okay, I'm out of here. So no, I'm, I'm a little scared about that part, telling regular civilians, if you will, to go do that. I guess that's where we get the police involved and say, listen, can you make a stop by there, make a suggestion, find out if there's something maybe unsafe about it or whatever, and potentially deal with that. And I was also told that the police even said, don't no, confront him. I'm like, where do we go from there? You know, it's like we got somebody in, in the area that's background checks. <laughs> no. All right, thank you. Uh, yeah, just real quick, if you can keep it to 30 seconds. Can microphone. You explain to you why? Microphone, please. Microphone, please. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, every time I've gone to this, I've heard the same type of an area where there's a neighbor having an issue with a neighbor. Noise. Um, can you explain to me why the police can't address that? I was under the impression that was what the police were here for. Was that if you had an issue with your neighbor, that they would mediate? you were doing something wrong or something's going to do wrong. I, I keep hearing from everybody, the police, no police, no, no police, we don't even go there. So I don't understand that. I'll give you an example. Back when I was in my 20s, uh, my brother came up from Connecticut. He did a lot of shooting. Next thing I know, knock, 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 there was an officer on my door. Somebody had called and said, hey, there's a lot of noise here at night. He talked to us. He explained that somebody was unhappy and everything, and that was the end of it. We stopped. I don't understand why that isn't the approach now. Okay. Thank you, Kendall. Um, Evan, do you want to just sure. address that? And in a perfect world and in a perfect place where neighbors are neighborly, you can go talk to your neighbor. But when your neighbor decides, no, I don't want to listen to you, I get to do whatever I want whenever I want, the police need something called an ordinance. 
which is what we're talking about. They need something to be able to go to your property and say, you are in violation. And then if it has to, to go to court. And only then a judge decides where that goes. That's what the police need. They will talk to anybody. They always do. But if you don't want to listen and you don't want to be a good neighbor, that's what we fall back on. And you've heard, I don't want to call it testimony, uh, but we've heard all the comments. Most of the good neighbors, we never hear from you. We don't hear from you because you've taken care of it yourself. We range from people who let their dogs out um, to people who play loud music to people who shoot their guns in, in their backyard. We get the whole range. Most of the time, you never hear about it because it's dealt with. These things sometimes don't. That's why you need an ordinance. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I, one question um, I have for Could, the You have to police. direct it to me, oh, please. I'm sorry. Uh, for the police, is uh, where where does our police department stand on issuing uh, uh, permits for suppression devices? I, I don't know. Is that something you can answer, Chief? We don't issue permits for suppression well, devices. You have to apply to need permission. Right? You have to apply to the federal government to do that. But I, I was under the impression that we also needed uh, permission from our local police department. You have to well. notify. I appreciate it, but we're not here to talk yeah. about suppressors. We're here well, to talk about a shooting lot of ordinances. Are about noise. Noise ordinances. I understand yep. the noise. Right. But, noise but yeah, we're not, we're not and prepared I'll, for that. The other thing is, and we were talking about, nobody will certify that a range is safe. Nobody. No, not, not one police, to, our local police will not do it. Fish and Wildlife will not do it because nobody wants to take a while on the liability of saying, yeah, I saw it and it was. They're not going to do it, probably for some of the same reason. We don't, we don't know what you're going to do with it. We're not responsible or don't want to be. Whatever you do with it off your property, nobody wants that to come back to them and say, is this your signature? Nobody's going to do that. And so that's why when, when we talk about some of the stuff, we're not saying we're going to certify your range or your thing. We're going to show you that the NRA had a handbook or the Fish and Wildlife has a handbook, you should, we're just looking at the general conditions like this map. Uh, we'd prefer you to turn that way and not towards this person's house. That's kind of the stuff we're talking about, but we'll never certify <coughs> whether your range or your property is safe. We're not gonna do that. Okay, thank you. So we're, we're gonna be done for tonight, there'll be other opportunity to uh, to, to provide input. Uh, I I get lots of email, uh, and I read all of them. So, if you want to write to to the board, be good to send it to me. But copy the rest of the board so they all know what you're thinking too. Um, so this is not done. This is just the workshop uh, step. There's a lot many more steps to go before we get an ordinance. So there'll be lots of more time for opportunities. But we have other work to do tonight. So we're going to conclude uh, this business item 5D for tonight. And thank you all for your time and your input uh, very much. Yes, sir? Excuse me. Can I make one recommendation? Real quick. Instead of a regular meeting, could we hold a special meeting? So we all can have, uh, have time enough to discuss all this. Okay. I know you guys are busy. We talk about that, but we have so much work to do that we have to end up combining them, but yeah. Okay.
you. And it's just going to get busier as this uh, budget season goes. So I'll just take a few minutes break while everybody's leaving. Might be good. Yeah, you can. Let's be back in about three or four. Okay, we're gonna uh, we're gonna hmm. bring it back. I think. Where were we? By definition, it's four. So we're gonna uh, yeah. finish D. We're, we're on we're E. Finished D. We're well. We didn't really. We're yeah. Done, we're yeah, done okay. talking about D. We decided to move on. Decided to move on. Yeah. So we're gonna go to five E. And that's the approval of a lease agreement with National Business Technologies for copiers. Um, oh, we're looking yeah. to align and consolidate things. Um, this is one, one of those opportunities. So, yeah, really. Greg, do you want to? Sure. Put so us on that quickly. I mean, you read it all, but yep. if you want to just give us a high level. Um, so basically, uh, one of the tasks that IT has taken on around consolidation and alignment over the past several months is looking at our copiers across our many different buildings and there's all kinds of agreements, all kinds of equipment, different companies, different brands, different contracts. Um, IT found a company, National Business Technologies, that which we can enter into one contract, one agreement uh, to serve all our properties. Um, it actually would result in savings, annual savings of almost $10,000, $9,900. Um, and the recommendations will be replacing 16 copiers between the town and the village. Uh, be paying the, the company would pay off the existing lease agreements, buy them out. Um, it would add a copier to the finance department, which they have been looking for. And it would re replace a public copier at the Brownell Library with a device that includes money collection capabilities, which would allow the profits to go to the library. Uh, the lease agreement includes all the toner, the parts, labor, travel, and supplies. The only exceptions are paper and staples. Um, so this is going to go to the, the select board and the trustees. Uh, I believe you're seeing it first and looking for approval to, to uh, authorize the unified manager to enter into the lease agreement with National Business Technologies. Is this color and black and white? Or? Yes. Ah. Yep. That's awesome. Okay. Uh, we're actually up to 18 copiers and it'll be a little bit less, but um, we realized a copier hadn't been included, but Rob did a great job with this. Um, it, it really takes care of a lot of things. The, uh, I was gonna mention the one copier that we do have at the uh, Brunel Library. Currently, it is coin operated, but we don't. the library does not get the funds. Now, when we put this in, the library does get the funds and the library can determine what they wanna do with their proceeds. Great. We'll, we'll double check on the color, uh, Evan, I think that's the case, but um, the chief is familiar with yeah. it in the past, the past yeah. contracts, so uh, you'll have just to double check, so we yeah. can do that. Because that's expensive. Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay. Elaine. Can I just ask a, a question about pr um, our purchasing policy? I thought that um, we just approved a change to the purchasing policy that contracts under $40,000 don't have to come to the board. Over the life of this contract, it is over forty thousand dollars. Got it. Okay. Okay. Just want to see if we could eliminate some work for you, but <laughs> gotcha. no, you're right. And, and we had a discussion about that. We're like, great, the first one out of the box. <laughs> and then we said, no, ethically, this is the life of the contract. This is the right thing to do. And we wanted the the boards to see the work that had gone into this, and what happens when you work together. Um, and combine your contracts. <coughs> okay, Andy. Uh, with, uh, I, I guess to extend the purchasing question, did we go out for bids for this? How did we choose the company? Um, actually, they came to us and they did an audit. Yes, yeah, I, I remember that discussion so, previously. That's yeah. why I was wondering if, right. if, if the results of their audit or, or, or when we approved the, the, the or we, we had the discussion about the audit. I don't know if we approved anything in that discussion. No, we just did an audit and, and we have verified their references, et cetera, to look at. And one of the things we'd be doing is as a sole source. Right, but so I guess they're, they're a reputable firm. We've yeah, checked yeah, their. I, I'm, not, I'm not saying they aren't. I'm just yeah. questioning whether, whether because of the amount and the, the that that and it, and that it's multiple years, or is it multiple years? Um, do we need to go out? Does our purchasing policy require us to go out for bid for this? No. What it, what it does say is that if we do it, we could 
claim it as uh, a sole source. A, a, I'd have to look up the language in the policy, but I believe it gives us the ability to recommend it uh, without going out to bed. Okay. Other questions on this? Andy? You're in a row. Yeah, um, I, I sent this question in, a, in an email, and I'm sorry, I left my house at 4.30 this morning and haven't seen any email. Um, I'm not seeing much right now either. But um, <laughs> the, the, the question, I think, think you answered it, is the, that the library gets to use the money collected in that cop here. That's the intent, is to allow yes. them to, to, to do that. And I understand it's the village library, so maybe I have no right mm -hmm. to ask the question, but does there need to be a discussion about the fact that this is a, I don't know, is this a joint contract? Is this a town, or is it, is it, how's it being paid for and do we care? I don't really care, but I just, just from the standpoint of we're, we're enabling uh, uh, f uh, an outside funding source for the library, are we using town funds to do that? And you just want to make sure we're being transparent on that. I can speak to that you a little bit. Address that? Um, in the past, it, many years ago, I would say five or more years ago, whenever the library collected overdue fees, mm -hmm. they always went into the general fund for the village and not back to the library. Mm -hmm. And so the trustees voted to allow small amounts of income from late fees, photocopy, or that kind of thing to go back to the Brownell Library general okay. fund and not okay. the village general fund. I okay, just helpful. wanted to make sure there was a discussion about it. And like, it's probably not my business because it's probably a trustee library, <coughs> village library trustee discussion, not anything. I think I can say at this time, I mean it. I think we're just talking about nickels and dimes. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Okay. The second part of your question uh, was finance department goes through it and they apportion the contract. So you had a copier, you now have another yep. copier. Yep. This is the cost and they apportion it back into the budget. Okay, all right, thanks. Okay. Uh, Sorry, I mean, Chief. The town, the town actually, the town library does collect money for the copies up there. It's just the machine doesn't collect it. It's on an honor system when it comes up. So the town is also collecting money that's important for you. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Like four copies. And it just doesn't have one of the... Uh, it's not a coin op. Coin operate, you make the copies, there's a sign on, it says how much it is, you pay the debt. So the, so the yeah. town library is collecting fees for copies. Right? Okay. And, the, and, they, and they, they use, they put it into their own... I do not know yeah, anything about where it goes. I just know that they do charge for copies there. Yeah. Then I just want to make sure we're being consistent. Yeah. We probably are. Huh? And I'll be <laughs> brutally honest, I don't know what they're doing with yeah. their nickels yeah. and dimes now. <laughs> right. But I hope they're putting it into <laughs> shingles because <laughs> we just, you know, fixing up the building so it wouldn't. Mm. All right, I'm done. Okay. Anybody else on this one? Want a motion? I would love it. I would move that the select board authorize the unified manager to enter into a lease agreement with National Business Technologies to supply all of the copier needs for the town. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Uh, do we have a second on that one? Second. Thank you, Mike. Any further discussion about this uh, lease agreement for copyright? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, it passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you all. All right, now we're moving on here to 5F, and we have the approval of the select board minutes of the, uh, the joint meeting. On October, that was a joint meeting. Yes. Of um, it says October nineteenth, but on on the uh, minutes it says October eleventh. October eleventh. What's that? Minutes yeah, but I'm, uh, the uh, oh, I'm sorry, my bad. I'm looking at the check warrants. Everything's okay. fine. October eleventh. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a motion to approve the select board minutes of October eleventh with, with corrections? So moved. Thank you. Ready? Now a second. Second. All right. Let's start on page one. Now, these pages aren't numbered, but I did number them myself. Oh, so, great. page one. Okay. Page two. All right. On line 60, please. Um, it was Ms. Sobchak that discussed the progress. 
of the process. Okay, Not so me. change Miss Rayner to Miss Subject. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you agree, you. Really, on that? Yes, thank okay. you. Awesome. Anything else on two? Okay, number three, page three. All right. Um, I'm looking at line 117. Da -da -da -da. It had been two years since the last effort to consolidate recreation. I'm wearing the wrong glasses. And voters were told, this is what I'd like to insert, because this is what I said, and voters were told that if the rec district proposal did not pass, the departments would not merge. And then I would insert back then, voters were afraid, not are afraid. And then on 118, I would then put a period after absorbed and say, therefore, it is important to inform the public frequently about the process with much discussion along the way. Okay, it's quite a bit. Yeah, everybody I think Greg has it. Everybody okay everybody. with that? No issues? Okay, I'm not hearing issues. Then we'll go on to page four. And we'll go on to page five. Larry? Uh, once again, on line 225, I believe it was Ms. Sopchak remarking about co-location on the video, not myself. Is that correct, Elaine? I believe that is correct. Thank okay. you. Okay, then we'll give you the credit for that. Okay, and then Irene, page five. And then on line 230, please. Um, there was a discussion regarding how to, and then I would delete to the end of that sentence and say how to, inserting the following, use words to clarify town-wide or town outside the village rather than the word town, which has different meanings. So what is it you're adding? Yeah. Is that commentary I, at the end? Yeah, yeah. it's going to say there was discussion regarding how to, and then I will cut out the rest of the sentence and add instead, use words to clarify town-wide or town outside the village rather than using the word town, which has different meanings. You have that? Okay. Everybody okay with that? No objection? Okay. okay. All right, then we're on to six. Nothing there? Okay. So all those in favor of the October 11th select board minutes with correction, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes unanimously. I would move approval of the select board minutes of October 15th, 2018 with select board member corrections. Okay, thank you, Irene. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, thank you, Mike. Let's start on page one. Uh, I would like to add something to line 43 where it says I announced that uh, Sam was going to, um, let's see, was, was what does it say, Mr. announced it tonight, it was the last night, so, yeah, as the official recording secretary, blah, blah, blah. I'd like to just include that uh, Ms. Stultz received a standing ovation from all present. Hmm. Yes. Like yes, please. Okay. Anything else on one? Okay, page oh, two. <laughs> page three. Uh, Andy, are you waving over there? Sorry, I didn't see you. Yep. Uh, line 132, it says, uh, starts the previous line, Mr. Watts was opposed because it would be inconsistent with the tree farm property. It should say inconsistent with the blue zone. Okay. Everybody okay with that? You got that? Great. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Anything on four? All right. Uh, I just on 156, adding the word foot. It's a 500 foot buffer around the parks. That's line 156? Yeah. 500. There's a 500 there, but I okay. think we need to give it a. So we can put that little comma. Label your there. answers, right? Okay. Make sure we said. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm sorry. Again, please. It says 500, but it needs to just have a, a label on it, a 500 foot buffer. I just want to add the word. Yeah, it just says 500 buffer. Yeah. Oh, the so word foot's missing. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Right. Was that page four? That was four. Okay. Uh, page five. And page six. All right. Just um, asking for clarification on 254. Was it an electric sign or an electronic sign that you wanted? I said a new sign. I didn't, new sign. I didn't say electronic. All right, so let's the change it to new. The discussion went to that. All right. And that's exactly the, the change I wanted to, yeah. Okay. So on 254, if we can take out an electric and put a new <laughs> instead, please. Thank you. Okay, no any, anything else on page six? 
page seven, eight, or nine. Okay, all those in favor of the October 15th select board minutes with correction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passed unanimously. That's all the minutes we had. So, do I have a motion to approve consent, please? So, so moved. Second. Okay, thank you. All right, so, what do we, uh, any comments on consent? I read. Hooray for the Cemetery Commission. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the last grant that they got was, but that's fabulous. That, that cemetery needs a ton of work, so, and grants are going to find to apply for it, so I'm really thrilled for them. Okay. They got it. Yes. Um, I put this on consent. I know we're still working with what's consent, what's business. Uh, it seemed like a no-brainer, and mm -hmm. you always have the chance to pull it off, but uh, I do want to echo Irene that Cemetery Commission, this is completely on their own doing. Yeah. They, they got this $25,000 grant. I think it's a wonderful thing for them that will allow them to do a lot of work. Um, so right. I almost could have put it on business just to draw attention to that, but um, I'd like to do that now. Okay. Well, yeah, wonderful. So please let them know. So we thrilled that they... They found a, a, a significant grant. And I know that there's quarterly reports due for this. Is there any way we could have the commission do that, not staff? Uh, they are or open to, they'll certainly help with it. Um, there might be a little bit of staff support, but I think they're really going to take the lead on this. Okay, that'd be wonderful. They could take the lead on that so it doesn't fall to the staff. Okay, anything else? Good? All right, all those in favor of the consent agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. Mm -hmm. All right, now we're on to the reading file. Comments about the reading file? Andy. On the uh, upcoming meeting schedule, the meeting scheduled before town meeting is two weeks before, and we're typically not ready two weeks before. Um, so I'm just wondering. I know I realize that the week before town meeting is school holiday uh, or school vacation, but I, I don't know. I just I don't know if we need to have a discussion. Maybe it's just too early to have that discussion. So which but one is it, Andy? You're talking the about? February 18th. Well, there's two things. It's a holiday, and it's two weeks before town meeting. We've typically in the past had a meeting much closer to town meeting because we're not always ready by that, the 18th. That's actually a typo. Um, the schedule that was approved last year, I think it was the, either the 21st or 22nd, but it was that Wednesday or Thursday to avoid the holiday. Yeah, okay. Um, okay. So I, it's a little bit closer to so, town so meeting, I'm and not, it's, it's I'm not, not completely the 18th, and I'll pass that correction on. Not completely. <laughs> and as long as we're on that just one, I just want to remind the board that I will mm -hmm. not be present for the November 19th one. <gasps> I will be out of town and unable to even call in. So, Mike, you'll be up to bat. I can roll. Okay, anything else on, on consent? Um, or not consent, um, but on reading file? Um, no? Okay. So, we'll move on to executive session. None required because we did it in open meeting. So, ready, is there any business? There's no other business we can do. It's not warned. I would move we adjourn. Okay. <laughs> Five seconds. Second. All right, Mike. Any further discussion about adjourning? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Aye.